going to chapter 16, that is control of gene expression in prokaryotes. This little outline, what uh, the most important parts of chapter 16. You have, uh, of course, you know the control of gene expression is important for every living system. If you don't control gene expression, you don't have life. And when you have unregulated control of gene expression, you have a problem. Now, how is it that the different systems or different species will organize their expression? In case of prokaryotes, you have these operon systems. That is a very neat, organized way of uh, expressing genes. And then you have several ways in which these operons will be regulated. So you have genes and regulatory elements. You have different levels of gene regulation. And you also have uh, DNA binding proteins that will help with, help with gene regulation. So just a little you know, summary of what uh, the chapter is talking about. The regulatory gene, regulatory elements. And this, you know, don't panic, just a little outline, but we're going to go into detail now. So this is the first thing that is actually in detail that you have to know. Transcription regulation in the prokaryotic cell. So you have this neatly organized grouping of genes. So you have these operons. If you have genes that are coming out in tandem sequence, sequence they're stuck to each other, those are called operons. And what is an operon? It is uh, something in the DNA. This is not in the RNA. This is in the DNA of the prokaryote, okay, inside the DNA of the bacteria. <coughs> that you have some types of regulatory gene that is before the operon, but then what constitutes the operon? You have a promoter site. Remember what the promoter is doing? In the prokaryote, the promoter is going to interact with some type of polymerase. Yes, the sigma that is part of the complex of polymerase is the RNA, RNA polymerase, right? And that is the core, or is the other one as the core? Follow enzyme, right? If you have a sigma unit that recognizes promoters, sigma unit with the alpha, beta, or, uh, or gram, gram the epsilon, all the other subunits, the beta, beta prime, alpha, two alphas, right? All of the core enzyme together with the sigma makes the follow enzyme that is going to recognize the promoter. Once that RNA polymerase recognizes the promoter, it's going to start making the RNA for expression of the gene. Or in this case, several genes, they are in tandem. Now, once you have this big polymerase that binds here and recognizes and starts making the gene, you see there is nothing between one gene and the next. So this polymerase here, once it's bound, is going to translate, is going to transcribe all the genes that are stuck to together after each other. This is in the bacteria. So this is an important aspect of this operon. You have a promoter and you have genes that are regulated via this promoter action here. The promoter region, you have also an operator region. Oh, of course, how do you control the regulation? How do you regulate this promoter? Close to the promoter, you have this operator region that is going to tell this whole system whether to go or not to go, whether to go on to stand or to stop. So you have several ways in which this operon can work. Sometimes you have inducible operons, other times you have uh, repressive operons, and you're going to look at each uh, case in particular. Now, one thing that is very important here is that once you turn one EG on, so they all turn on. All of them there are in a sequence here, they all go on. So this one here is the first example of an operon, tryptophan operon. This is a repressible operon. Now, what does that mean? It means that this system is always on. It's endogenously expressed. But if you have, you know, this is a tryptophan operon, what tells you is that it's making tryptophan. Right? Tryptophan is what? An amino acid. Okay, tryptophan is amino acid. Now, if this operon is always on, it's always making tryptophan. Now, if you have plenty of tryptophan in the cell, the cell doesn't need to waste energy to make more tryptophan. 
remember, making protein uses energy in order to have the messenger RNA made you need to have energy every time you're making the phosphodiester bond you're using energy and then when you're translating to make your protein every time you're making that peptide bond you're using more energy so if you have plenty of tryptophan why should you waste energy making more tryptophan so the bacteria has this neat system of controlling when to turn on and when to turn off this whole operon here this system of genes here so when you do not have tryptophan present, then this promoter is on, the switch is not activated, so the promoter is constitutively active, polymerase goes through here, makes the RNA, and then you make your tryptophan. Now once you have plenty of tryptophan in the system, you see here is, is uh, representing tryptophan in the system, high concentration, it will bind to a repressor. This repressor molecule once bound to tryptophan, will change conformation. And once it changes conformation, it will be able to interact with the switch, which is at the operator system here, close to that promoter. So this repressor, once bound to tryptophan, now it can interact and turn off this whole operon, because there is no need to make more tryptophan. So it will go there and block polymerase, RNA polymerase, from making more RNA. So this is a repressible operon, is an inducible repressible operon, and this, as you see, is a negative regulation of the system that was constitutively being expressed. And of course, pictures are worth a, a thousand words. I have a little site here. And you know, we have plenty of movies about these systems. In the bacterium Escherichia coli, a group of five genes code for enzymes is required to synthesize the amino acid tryptophan. All five genes are transcribed together as a unit called an operon. An operon is a group of genes that is under the control of a single operator site. A regulatory protein called a repressor can bind to the operator site and prevent transcription. When tryptophan is lacking in the environment, the repressor is inactive. RNA polymerase binds to the promoter site and then proceeds down the DNA. Now remember, this one in prokaryotes, the RNA polymerase will directly interact with the promoter region. Right? That is not happening with the eukaryotes. Right? That's one of the differences. Transcribing the genes for the tryptophan biosynthesis enzymes. When tryptophan is present in the environment, the organism no longer needs to make tryptophan. Tryptophan binds to the repressor and activates it. The activated repressor now binds to the operator located within the tryptophan promoter and blocks transcription. The tryptophan repressor is a helix turn helix regulatory protein. When tryptophan is absent from the environment, the repressor is in an inactive conformation and cannot bind to the DNA to prevent transcription. When tryptophan is abundant, two molecules of tryptophan bind to the repressor. This alters the orientation of the helix turn helix motifs in the repressor and causes their recognition helices to fit into adjacent major grooves of the DNA. Thus, the synthesis of tryptophan occurs when it is needed, but is repressed when tryptophan is available. Okay, that's a bit too much information. You don't need to know exactly the details of how this protein-DNA interaction is happening, but I thought it was really neat to show you that this is actually a physical activity. It's not magic. Okay, this really happens in a physical form here. Yeah, this is just what we're talking about, the repressor and the tryptophan that activates the repressor. Now we are going to talk about uh, inducible operon, which is the LAC operon. So here, you also have a system that is only going to be active in case you have a certain molecule present in the environment. So this is the opposite idea. This system is not, these genes are not constitutively active because if it is 
meant to make enzymes that degrade lactose and you don't have lactose in the environment, you're just going to waste energy if you keep on making these enzymes. So this system is only going to be active when you have this inducer molecule, which is in this case the lactose or allolactose. So what happens here? You have an active repressor that is always bound to the switch, which is the operator system close to your promoter. This is our linear promoter, actually. This whole thing here is your promoter. So now RNA polymerase gets in there and it really wants to um, transcribe those genes. But if the repressor is there with nothing bound to it, so polymerase just cannot go through. The genes that are transcribed after this promoter region are genes that are involved with the permeability of the membrane to allolactose. Now, if, you're, if you need the transcription of these genes and the translation of those genes in order to have a molecule that is going to allow allolactose to get into the cell and you're not transcribing it at all, how is it that allolactose is going to get inside the cell? Uh, is a problem of the chicken and the egg again. Okay, so think about it. I need a protein that is going to go to the membrane and it's going to tell, give me allolactose from the environment. If this gene is not transcribed, allolactose is not going to penetrate the cell. If allolactose is not going to be inside the cell, it's never going to bind to this repressor and inactivate it so then your transcription can be activated. So how do you solve the problem? Okay, there is a problem. So the problem here is that how can you get the protein if you're not transcribing the gene? And how can you get allolactose in the cell if you don't have the protein? The answer to this problem is that this guy here, this active repressor here, is bound to the operator, yes, but it's not bound with crazy glue. It is not covalently bound to it. This is a molecule and protein. This is a DNA and protein interaction. Most of the time it's there. Sometimes it falls off, and then it remembers that it has to be bound, so it goes back and inactivates it again. But for the little time that it falls off by itself, then RNA polymerase that is waiting right there until this guy falls off. It's just waiting for this guy to sleep a little bit, and then he's going to go and transcribe the genes. Okay, so once this repressor here forgets that he has to repress a little bit, and he goes up a little bit, oh, oh, okay, oh, I'm not in there, and then he looks up and he sees polymerase that just transcribed a set of these genes. I said, oh, gotta better do my job. So goes there and blocks it again. Okay, so in this case here, you are suppressing gene expression, but not all the time. Sometimes it fails. Sometimes you get a little expression. So this way, you can get the allolactose inside the cell, and then this is going to be inactivating your repressor. When you have enough concentration of this inside the cell, now you get all your repressor away from the interaction of this operator system here, and then you get the transcription of your gene in the presence of that repressor inactivating protein. In Escherichia coli, two regulatory sites, the cap binding site and the operator site, function together to ensure that the three proteins required for growth on lactose are produced only when glucose, a more efficient substrate, is absent and lactose is present. Okay, we are not covering the glucose absent part. Okay. I think that is complex enough for this lac operon system. Just it's good to know that glucose absence has to be there, but just focus on the lactose presence. The repressor covers part of the promoter when it binds to the operator, preventing RNA polymerase from making messenger RNA. When lactose is present, a lactose isomer binds to the repressor and inactivates it. This prevents the repressor from binding to the operator site. RNA polymerase can then associate with the promoter and carry out transcription. Transcription of the lac genes is said to be induced by lactose. So the, la the allolactose is the inducer. That's another very important uh, word to keep in mind. <clears throat> is inducing? What is it inducing? 
the inactivation of the repressor. I feel like this is more of a math class. The negative of the negative gives you a positive. Yeah. Now, in the presence of allolactose, the lac repressor, what happens here? The lac repressor, in the presence of allolactose, is it bound? Before you look at the answers and you have this type of questions, you have to see what is the question asking. It's asking about the lac repressor. Without allolactose, what is the repressor doing? It's binding to the operator. So now that you know the answer, you go and look for it. Now, if you read the correct version of this, and it says in the presence of allolactose, what is allolactose doing? It's interesting. It's binding to... Yeah. The allolactose is going to bind the repressor. It's going to inhibit the repressor. So you have this double negative, so you're going to get a positive. So now, if you look at the lac repressor, oh, in presence of allolactose, is not binding to the operator. So now you look for your answer. Hmm. Cannot bind to the operator. Oh, so now this is...